Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan, your host, and today we have a very special guest, Raul Ortiz, Ortiz right? Ortiz. Ortiz, yeah. okay, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, which district are you representing? Okay, I am a reverend. I was ordained in 1995. I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior at the age of 15, October 10th, 1982, at about 1205 a little church there in Norwalk, California uh, when I walked in there. Uh, There's some events that led up to that time when I was 13 and I started reading the Bible and as I started reading the Bible on my own when I came across John 3, 3, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God I at that immediately knew that for some reason I was not going to go to heaven but I didn't understand that God sent someone else in my life later on uh, in high school that began to explain to me what born again meant and it led ultimately to my salvation and then uh, as I grew up there in Norwalk I actually grew up in my district. I was born in Downey. I'll give you the cities in a second here, but I was born in Downey, and then I uh, grew up in Norwalk, uh, and then I uh, bought a house here in La Mirada. So my district, District 64, running for State Assembly of California, and that's going to include the cities of La Habra, La Mirada, South Whittier, uh, Santa Fe Springs, Norwalk, Downey, Bell Gardens, Bell, and Cudahy. So I, I grew up in that district. I raised my children there. I am the proud father of, of eight children. I have eight. Eight eight children. Wow. I have six girls and two boys. So in my world, girls rock. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, four granddaughters and, and my 29-year-old daughter, she's uh, expecting again. And here in a few weeks, we'll get to find out. I'm having great anticipation and expectation in my prayer that we're going to hear that it's going to be a grandson. So <laughs> we do need a little more men in my family. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What made you want to run for office if you're a pastor? Like people these days tend to think separation of church and state and all that kind of stuff. What makes you think you want to run for office as a reverend, right? Yes. Well, uh, it's a calling. You know, when I hear that oftentimes, that dialogue of uh, separation of church and state, what we find that in the Constitution, nowhere is that mentioned. So that's been a misnomer been repeated over you know decades of that philosophy but you know the way the founding fathers set that up it was because they were coming from England there was a lot of state controlled churches and so when they came here and they framed the constitution it was meant the government cannot tell what the church needs to do but the church can have an impact and influence its generation and its government and how they rule and so that's what the framing of our constitution is and as far as me and how why I decided to run. I had an awakening back in 1986, a unique experience where I traveled with an evangelist at the age of 19. And being out there with him, he kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things that was going on at that time. He kind of went back from, you know, what happened in heaven and, uh, you know, the rebellion of Lucifer and he went all the way through the Old Testament, New Testament, brought it up to modern times right back in 1986. So I became a student at that time of geopolitics, but from a very prophetical, biblical world view point. So that's the lens I look at things. So I was trying to connect and see where God's leading. And so when everything shut down the last two and a half years ago, my last four kids that I have right now are homeschool. And my wife, she has an order how she conducts our homeschooling. And they had a lot of outdoor activities before shutdown. So now when the shutdown happened, you know, all those extra activities were all gone. Now they're suffering from cabin fever. You know, <laughs> So when I would come home from work, a long day of work, and I would look at my wife's face, my children's face. My girl, uh, who's nine right now, she is probably, uh, she was seven at the time. She was telling me, Daddy, you know, I wish you'd go back to the time where we don't have to wear masks, you know. <laughs> so that was really starting to really take a toll on me. And, I was, and I've always been very vocal, no matter wherever God has placed me in the workplace. You know, after a while, people will realize well, I'm a man of faith. It's the way I lead my offices that I've been fortunate to lead. So when it came time, I began to pray very specifically, Lord, what do you have me for this time frame of my life? How can I be more strategic about this battle, the tyranny that we're experiencing. So he led me to last August, last year, to a CRA meeting, which is California Republican Assembly chapter in Fullerton, and I walked in there, and then from there, uh, I, the following month, I joined it. They asked me to be the second vice president of the board. And March 8th, I get a call 
asking if I would like to run for office in my district because there was no Republican representation for my district. And I don't know where they got that idea from because that was wow. kind of the furthest thing from my mind. But since I have been praying, God, how are you going to open doors for me in this new chapter in my life? I saw that as an immediate door swinging open. And so I, the lady that had called me, her name was uh, Lauren Wallace. She's from up north in Sacramento. And she, and she said, uh, Michelle gave me your name, thought that you might be interested in running. I don't even know who Michelle is, but I said, <laughs> you know what, Lord? I just felt God called me right there and then. So I threw my hat in. I walked through that door and then here we are. Wow. So what makes you think that you can have an impact in the Republican Party? Because <clears throat> from my opinion, the Republican Party in California is extremely weak and they don't do anything that is good. And I am surprised that they will tell a pastor to run because Republican Party in California is like the most leftist Republican Party around the country. What makes you think they pick you and what can you bring to the table to fight all of these Democrat controlled state and even some rhino in our state? Yes, I would have to agree with you, Ethan. I think to sum that up really quick is that as I look at the Word of God and I see God is a God of underdogs. It was March 8th. At about 10 o'clock when I got that call and then when I said yeah she connected me with another gentleman uh, Rick Marshall and he called me at 10 30 that night I had to file papers and everything had to be been to the register office by March 11th and I'm still working full-time I still have to go get signatures that night when he told me and guided me how to fill out the paperwork and where to go and then he also told me that being the only Republican running against five Democrats and then the front runner front runner had all the Democrat machine and money uh, behind her that I probably will make it past the primary and I probably because I'll get all the Republican votes and but I'll probably be number two to clearly the front runner to beat was going to be Blanca so but I knew and I told him that and I go well I understand reality I'm a very optimistic person but I also as tempered with realism so I understand your message that you're giving me but I also know I serve a mighty God and that he is a God of the possibilities and that he can open doors and so I'm in it to win it but however it shakes out that's going to be in God's hands but I'm going to give my best effort you know and let God be the way maker mm -hmm. and so knowing that God is a God of the underdog you know David was an underdog Gideon was an underdog you know you look throughout the whole Bible God chooses underdogs and then uses them to make an impact for their generation so I think this particular season the candidates I've met it really shows that God is doing something in California and God is stirring up his people because there's so many Christians God people, just like the You First candidates, we're all Bible believers, uh, Christians, uh, God is raising His people up for this generation, for such a time as this, to get in the fight and to start to steer the course. It ain't going to be a speedboat turn, it's going to be probably a ship turn, but we're starting to steer that the right direction. And then because I won the primaries, now I have the opportunity to serve as an ex officio for the Orange County Republican Party, so that gives us a voice, and I'm not the only one, you know, Mitch Clemens, I know he was here, so he's one of my uh, candidate partners. He's in there too. We're having a voice now that we could potentially make an impact in our Republican Party in California. Yeah, obviously you are reverent, so religion is very big part of your life. From my opinion, religious freedom is really under attack, not only in California, but the whole United States as a whole. What can you do and what's your thoughts on that? We're living in a very unique time mm -hmm. where there's a lot of tyranny that we just experienced and we're, and we're still experiencing it, right? And when we saw during the pandemic that they shut down the churches, and they told them that they cannot worship. Three weeks into Zoom, I was Zoomed out. This is not the way the church is supposed to be meeting. The church has been through real pandemics, not to make light of COVID, but those pandemics killed you know, millions of people. And the church continued to meet. Mm -hmm. The church continued to help those that were sick during those pandemics. Yeah. So, you know, when we were told that we can't worship, and then we were told when we can potentially worship, and then we were told once we opened the doors again, we were told how many 
that can actually come in and worship and not to sing and still maintain all these other you know, ridiculous mandates. Three weeks in, I had enough of it. And during my morning devotions, before I get ready to go to work, you know, I'm there talking with God. And all of a sudden, on my Facebook, Pastor Jack Hibbs, right down the street over here, he popped up on my feed and started talking about reopening on May 31st. You know, at that point in time, I felt God, okay, with my training, you know, my background, being the pastor before and in the ministry, that he was clearly telling me I need to start a church uh, in my backyard. So we started a church in my backyard May 31st, my small group that had been meeting in my home for the last uh, 10 years at that point in time, and then my family and other uh, members from Saddle, uh, Saddleback over there in Corona, they all came down and we would have about 20, 30 people in my backyard. We would worship. I would do the preaching. I had a, a high school buddy that you know I known and he would lead worship. And we met from from May 31st all the way to October before we went to Calvary Chapel here in Chinle Hills. And then we, we, we staked our flag there afterwards at the end of the October. We prayed and decided this is where we're going to stay. Um, so, you know, it's been it's been a journey. Uh, there's a lot and uh, there's a lot of tyranny that's going on. But if we can get enough of us up in the Sacramento, we can really give our voice. And, and, and because we're going to be part of the legislation, yes. we can make some bills that we can't have this type of tyranny go on again. You know, there is there is the First Amendment that, that churches are protected, free speech. But even beyond that, you know, we have Hebrews 10.25, forsake not the assembly of yourselves, as men or some do. Mm-hmm. You know, so much as we see the day approaching, and we see the day approaching, so that much more we need to have those doors open to give people hope, because people are without hope right now. Children are without hope. The moms and dads are without hope. You know, when these churches were closed down, they had nowhere to go outside of Zoom. So, but we need that interconnection with one another, that close fellowship. So, so those are some of the things that we can do that we can help out to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, even like the Black Death during that time, the Catholic Church was still open. Yeah. And then there were like millions and millions of people are dying. But yes. the Catholic Pope understand that. The church is the only hope for men to keep going. And if the church closes, the whole society is going to break down because of that. And I think what we did in California is that we, we comply. A lot of churches just comply with the government. And that is wrong. That is definitely not the right thing to do, especially now. The CDC just say that, hey, the t- pandemic is still here, but just don't give a crap about it just yeah. you know just 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 do whatever you want and you don't need to be vaccinated anymore and this thing it just uh it made the church goers realize that hey i don't need churches i don't need god's word i my, my, my life can be just fine and i could do whatever I want. I don't need someone to watch over. Uh, I don't need to feel the guilt when I do something bad. It made people leave churches. So I think that is uh, the pandemic was really an attack on churches, from yes. my opinion. Oh, I agree with you. California is going to be an abortion sanctuary state. What's your thoughts on that as a pastor? Well, we got uh, John 10.10. 10. That the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and that much more abundantly. So, you know, the thief, speaking of Satan, the threefold plan of Satan is to, you know, steal, destroy, and kill. So that's why the other party is a party of death. You know, our party is a party of life. I'm, I'm a candidate of life. Um, you know, it, it is a shame. Uh, there, there, there will be repercussions. Sin always carries its ill desert. You know, I am pro-life. Uh, life begins at conception. They, you know, a few years ago, they even came out with, uh, you know, uh, a scientific study where they actually now can, with special cameras, and I don't understand the whole process, but where they can see at conception, the sperm entering the egg and a spark of light comes up. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And then we are, you know, we are the salt and the light as well. Um, so I just kind of, when I think about that and I saw that, I immediately thought about, you know, we're the little lights that are supposed to shine, you know, in the darkness. And so life begins at conception. And uh, they're also trying to put Planned Parenthood's 
into our schools. We There's about 50 of them, I guess, throughout uh, LA County. On uh, July 15th, I got a call that they're going to put one at John Glenn High School in Norwalk, which was my old high school that I went to. I went there my 8th, ninth, and 10th grade year. And so when I heard that, I'm like, not on my watch, you know? So I jumped on I jumped on uh, my my Instagram, did a live, explained what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I posted that to my Facebook. I sent that to all my parent groups that followed me. And um, and then I sent, I, I messaged all my pastor friends in Norwalk in La Mirada because it was a Norwalk, Nor- Norwalk La Mirada school district that was trying to do this. And they put that agenda purposely on Friday night. So there's a short window for anyone who could do anything. Uh, so that was July 15th, Friday night. And then the board meeting was July 18th, that Monday evening. What so, yes. Yeah, so it, it was very shady how they were already doing it. So, uh, so I put that out. Uh, I got to get, I started to get response Saturday to the parents groups. Someone say, we're going to be there. Um, they start sharing my caption uh, on their social media. Uh, then I reached out to Jesse, who's the founder of Lexit. And um, he has a big platform. He jumped in it right away. Uh, he tried to hook up with Carmen, uh, who's the director of the Lexit. I hooked up with her uh, by Sunday. Uh, we finally connected. The afternoon, she posted on her uh, Instagram, who has a big following. And some of the other Lexit people also did the same thing. So by Saturday night, though, uh, I guess it took a life of its own on social media that the city of La Mirada told the school board, you need to pull that off the agenda. So I got a call from someone who's very active in our community saying, hey, Raul, they, they pulled it from the agenda. I said, okay, well, that's not a no vote. I said, uh, well, you know, they're asking her to pull what was going to happen on Monday. Yeah. I said, no, we're not. We're going to go forward with it because they need to see the numbers and they need to hear the voices. Yes. You know, so come Monday, I got off work. I went down there, uh, started at 630. People started to filter in. Miracle of God, grace of God. We had over 300 people there and the public comments went on for a little over two hours. Oh, wow. They did not foresee that coming. We, it was just a tremendous hand and movement of God that night. And we defeated that, that, uh, that idea of them trying to get a, a, uh, uh, Planned Parenthood. I just got word now they're going to try to do it to another school, but I'm trying to get confirmation. So I won't mention the school because I'm not sure if it's, if it's confirmed yet. Yeah, I think there's a lot we can do mm-hmm. like against abortion mm-hmm. as a Christian, as uh, just locally. They can only attack the weak-minded people and they specifically targeted weak-minded people and go like, hey, you are weak. We could help you by you just sacrificing your babies to mm. Satan and then yeah. uh, you could have a better life. You can enjoy freedom. You can do all these kind of things. I think that is pure ch- child sacrifice. It is child sacrifice. They are sacrificing that child on the altars of Satan via the abortion table. Suggest so every Christian to do what you did. Go out, protest. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've learned a lot from you. Is there anything else you want to you want to let your voters to know about you? Well, yes. You know, we uh, we do need a lot of volunteers. We need a lot of help. You know, we're uh, grassroots. You know, the, our party uh, doesn't really give us a whole lot of resources. Uh, so it's really just we the people. And so we the people, if we get behind the candidates like you know our campaign, uh, the You First campaign. Uh, there's a lot of good, solid Christians that are running right now. But here in the District 64, we do need a lot of help. We need people to, to come volunteer, to help walk the precinct, to call uh, donations. Uh, so you can reach me at RaulForAssembly.com. That's RaulForAssembly.com. And there you can connect with me on my, my social media, my Facebook, my Instagram, soon to be Twitter. Uh, and so we do need a lot of help. We do need the resources. But, you know, praise God for our primary. You know, we actually came in first place. We actually won by a little over 5,400 votes. Oh, okay. You know? So we're one of the candidates that actually won our primaries and came in first. That is a movement of God. That's something that, that Wait, I... you won the primary? Yes, yes. So, you know, the general election is going to be different, you know, because all those those Democrat votes potentially could consolidate, but I don't yes. think they are. I, don't, I really don't think they are. I think a lot of them are upset with their own party and, and with the candidate that they have. Uh, so I, I see God providing an east wind and going to part the Red Sea for us and he's
he's going to stir up the people, not just in my district alone, but in a lot of districts and, uh, and, and help us all get in there. So, but we do still got to put our feet to the ground. We got to be faithful and, and bring in our loaves and our fishes, you know, whatever, whatever resources, energy, uh, money, uh, whatever you can do. It may be small or it may be large, but whatever it is, you got to be faithful to give to the Lord together and then God will bring the increase and together we can make California golden again in Jesus name. Amen. And all right. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, your name My is pleasure. Raul Ortiz. That's right. Correct. All right. Uh, so please go out. Uh, say his name and talk about him with uh, your neighbors and your co-workers and uh, make sure that they know about him. Send them this video and then uh, let's get uh, the righteous mind into the office. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this time. <laughs> God bless.